Hey, this is Mr. Buss, and I'm going to go through the uh, AP Biology Primary Productivity Lab. Uh, this video will have to be two parts. The first part that you're watching now is uh, going to be me kind of talking about the setup for it, and the second part will be looking at the results and answering some questions. So, uh, you know, think about primary productivity. What does that mean? Well, we, we, we've, we've covered photosynthesis. We know that photosynthesis is the conversion of carbon dioxide and water molecules to uh, glucose molecules and the release of oxygen as a byproduct. Um, and so what, we, what I did is I just, uh, I went to the pond by the high school here, and I just collected some pond water, and I wanted to make sure that there weren't any uh, large macroscopic organisms, like things that I could see, bugs and such, uh, swimming around, no algae that I can see, or um, aquatic plants that I can see, but even though there's you know nothing that I can see in there, of course there's living organisms in pond water that are microscopic, little plankton, uh, small microscopic single-celled algae and bacteria, possibly even uh, protists like uh, euglena or paramecium, uh, amoeba, uh, amoeba, that kind of a thing. And so there's living organisms in pond water and we just can't see them. And so in this lab, uh, primary productivity, we're gonna look at the amount of photosynthesis that's occurring in pond water, all right? Because, um, you know, that's gonna, um, you know, producers are going to kind of dictate the uh, um, relative abundance of consumers, right? So if there's an increase in primary productivity, there's an increase in photosynthesis and uh, the trapping of light energy into chemical energy and the bonds of carbon to carbon bonds of uh, glucose molecules. And so we're gonna look at that. So I have, um, I have a sensor here that is going to be able to measure how much oxygen is in uh, water sample. So, you know, there's oxygen in the area breathing, about 20% of the area breathing is oxygen, uh, but in water, there's just a lot less oxygen. Um, and of course, oxygen is a byproduct of photosynthesis. So by measuring the change in the oxygen levels, whether they increase or decrease, we can, we can measure the amount of photosynthesis, but we also have to understand that respiration, cell respiration is the opposite. So um, oxygen might be produced, but also consumed um, by cell respiration because, you know, algae, even, assuming there's algae in there, and even if there's only algae, they're not just going to do photosynthesis. They're going to, um, you know, do photosynthesis, and then they're going to um, also uh, go through respiration to convert glucose into cellular ATP energy. All right, so this is kind of the basic setup on day one. I just went out to the pond and I got some uh, pond water and I took an initial uh, dissolved oxygen reading. So you don't need to write this value down, I'm just kind of showing you, demonstrating uh, how that would have been done. So I got an initial dissolved oxygen value for the water, okay? And then um, what I did is obtain, or then I, then I put the, the water, the pond water into, um, into three uh, containers. Uh, They're equal size containers and light can get through them. And so this is one of them and then I would put that right here. I've got a light source and I ran a light source uh, overnight, okay? So that photosynthesis could be occurring in that container overnight. I've got another container in here, uh, but it's covered with some screens. So same setup, there's a container in here, but there's just less light getting there. I don't know exactly how much less light. Let's, I, I'm gonna call it 50% light, but again, I, I don't know if that's 50% light. I'm just saying that it's less than, this would be considered 100% available light is going to this one. 50% to that one. And then I got another one here that I completely covered up with aluminum foil. So any algae in there are not getting a, a light. So theoretically, photosynthesis should be not occurring in here. So this is kind of the dark condition. So 100% uh, light, 50% light, 0% light. So just pretty pretty straightforward. I, you could have, I could have set up, you know, more of a one screen, two screens, three screens kind of thing, more of a gradient of how much light exactly they're getting, but I just went with the simple route of full, zero, and something in between. Okay, so that's the setup. Ran it overnight. 24 hours later, uh, we're gonna take the readings on those things, so I'm not gonna show that. I've already got um, readings from another class period that I'll use, but again, I just put the dissolved oxygen sensor in each of these, waited a minute or so until, I, uh, until the number stabilized, and then I would write that number down. So. Uh, next part of the video is going to be me kind of showing the data which you can use and we'll go through the questions as well. 